Hi there cuties, it's Heather Sparkles and for today's video I wanted to have some much needed toy time and today I'm going to be talking about the toys in my collection that are the most sentimental to me. All the toys on this table have a story and I'm going to tell them all one by one because I think as part of the rebonding with my collection time I should really like reflect on how I found these toys and what they meant to me because these are more than just toys and I know those of you that collect as well out there your collection is more to you than just a collection everything in your collection has meaning and these toys do something for you and there's always going to be people that just don't get it and that's okay because you have the toys and they are something in your life that really makes you happy and that's what's most important is your own happiness and doing what you love for you please don't let anyone ever change you don't let anyone convince you that you shouldn't be collecting these toys because you know what this is a wonderful hobby so wonderful and I know it's wonderful because I fell out of it for a few months and that was such a mistake because I really miss these toys so let's jump into this video I'm gonna tell the story of each of these so here we have my talking Pikachu plush at the height of the Pokemon craze. As a kid, I was so into Pokemon, and I can remember whenever I got this plush. This is not my original, unfortunately. That one is long since gone. But I can remember when I got this for Christmas, and I took this little guy everywhere. I had this little mini backpack, and I would pretend, and I would walk around my neighborhood pretending to be a Pokemon trainer, and I would have him in my backpack until it was time to battle. <laughs> and I just remember how much I loved him, and like, oh goodness, my Pokemon memories are the best. Pokemon was so good for my childhood. This is another one of my childhood Pokemon memories. So this is the KFC Eevee plush. And I can remember I took this little guy everywhere because I was so big into Eevee and the Eevee Lucians. And this little guy spent so much time with me in the swimming pool. That poor thing was completely ruined. But I can remember taking it swimming all the time. <laughs> and oh my gosh, as a kid, if I had known that Build-A-Bear Eevee was a thing, I would have lost my absolute mind. This is also not my original. That one was completely destroyed. I was one of those kids who loved toys to death and I had a mom that didn't want to hold on to anything. So she would routinely go through my toys and throw them all away. So yeah, maybe that's why I have so many toys now. You should have just let me keep them. <laughs> so yeah, the Pokemon were a really big part of my childhood and I just have so many sweet memories from them. I was really bullied really badly in school and Pokemon was definitely an escape for me so I'm really glad I had that growing up. The next thing, virtual pets. So this is my Toy Story pet. This one was so much fun. I found this recently thrifting and I have not taken the time to um, see if it even still works and to check the batteries and get it going but I can remember summer nights at my grandma's house and I had a whole keychain of virtual pets I remember I had Digimon a few Tamagotchis I had this I had, I had two of these Toy Story ones I can't remember who else I had but I know I had quite a few and I can remember I loved playing with the dog on here that catches the frisbees and that was my favorite one and I can remember that for the longest time I lost my keychain of virtual pets and I was devastated then finally a year later at my grandma's for some reason I was standing like on her kitchen counter area like there was this um, cabinet where we had like a bunch of stuff stored and I climbed up there to get into that cabinet and then I looked up on top and my whole keychain of virtual pets 
was on top of her cabinets and they were very dusty. <laughs> So this little guy connects me to my grandma's kitchen, a place I'll never be in again, in a time that I can never bring back with someone I can never bring back. So that's why this will always mean something to me because it's really nice to reconnect with her. Um, the next thing, the My Little Ponies. So I have quite a few My Little Ponies here from my childhood. I started collecting My Little Pony as a kid. Um, this is where the toy collecting started. <laughs> so let's start with uh, the first one. So this is one of the few that remain from my childhood. This is Sky Skimmer. This is Sky Skimmer and she's still wearing her 90s hair clip. <laughs> so that's how you know she's legit. I loved the Gen 2 ponies. I had so many of them and they all lived in a little dollhouse. Well, first they lived on top of my dresser and I got in trouble one day because I took some marker and I drew flowers all over my dresser because like I had this area that was like a little field for them. And then I had all the little fences that came with them divided up to make a little like, a little, um, I don't know, like apartment. <laughs> so they were all like roommates living together. And um, somehow, I don't know how, but from Gen 2, I discovered Gen 1 on the internet because I looked up My Little Pony online and that's when I saw collectors had websites up. This was in like, ooh, 1999 <laughs> or something like that. And so that's when I started collecting Gen 1. So. I found my first Gen 1 who I should have brought out at, um, at a thrift store and then after that I was on the hunt for them. So I can remember one night I was at cheerleading practice and like I said as a kid I was bullied real bad and I'm not trying to make this a big sob story but I joined the cheerleading squad in the hopes that I would be accepted by the rest of the school if I was a cheerleader. You know, I was like 10 years old, guys. Um, so I didn't make the team, by the way, despite going to practice. But to be honest, I was just never meant to be a cheerleader. It's just not for me. I ended up going on to play hockey and I kicked some serious butt at that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm no cheerleader, but I'm a really good hockey player. Anyway. So that night, they were setting up in the auditorium for a flea market and we were practicing in that auditorium. So we were able to kind of get a first look at what everyone was selling. And someone was selling just like this massive collection of Gen 1 My Little Pony. And my mom only had so much pocket change with her, uh, but she was able to get me some ponies. And among the first ones, was this girl right here. So this is Fizzy, my most favorite Gen 1 My Little Pony. And she has been with me since my childhood. I have cried with her. I have taken pictures with her when I was a kid. I came home from school and was so excited to see her. Sometimes I would even sneak her into my backpack. Me and Fizzy have been through a lot together. And she will always be a pony that means so much to me because she was from my first lot of ponies. Also in that lot was Moon Dancer, who's up there. And then this little girl and her little boyfriend. So as a kid, instead of like playing with dolls and stuff, I played with my ponies in my dollhouse and they would act out different animes because I was really into anime as a kid. Um, the animes they would act out the most was Sailor Moon and Card Captors. <laughs> so this little girl was me. This was my little pony avatar. This is Peeks and her hair is very bad because she was the pony that I loved the most. <laughs> I took her everywhere with me, including the school sometimes. And this was her love interest. Um, his name is Ribs and he has a little dragon on him. And these two went on so many adventures together. They took me to so many magical lands. I loved packing her up to go to my grandma's house. And I had a bunch of dinosaur toys there. And so she would like go all the way back to the Jurassic and hang out with dinosaurs. <laughs> and these two were like the ponies that I played with to death as a kid. I was a collector, but also a kid who played with them. 
So Peeks is always gonna be very, very dear to me. She was literally my childhood. <laughs> and I love her so much. And I'm so glad she's still here. I'm so lucky I still have the ponies. That's a pretty big deal. I almost lost that whole collection. So let's get one last thing about bullying out of the way. So I went to school events and every time I did, the kids would terrorize me. And at one of the school events, it was like a, um, I think it was like a church festival because I was in Catholic school. And they were also having a flea market inside of all the classrooms, they set it up. And I found this girl and I was really excited to get her. I had a little bit of money on me and I went up and bought her. And I can remember just being so happy to have found a pony at that place. I think I got made fun of pretty bad for buying her, but I didn't even care. She was my friend for the night and I felt safe and happy holding on to my little pony. And it really got me through that time in my life. Like if I didn't have My Little Pony during that time in school, I don't know what I would have done. I mean, at least I, I had video games and anime, but the ponies were what I played with all the time. And they were my true escape from what was going on at school. So I'm just so happy that this little ray of sunshine was there that night and that she cheered me up. The next one we have here is another pony that's very special to me. She was one of my favorites as a kid. Her name is Glow. And my mom actually found her for me at a yard sale and I thought she was the most beautiful pony ever as a kid. So here she is. She has these amazing butterfly wings and she's blue. I always had a thing for blue ponies with pink hair and on her forehead she has a little firefly. <laughs> So she was another huge favorite of mine. And I think I ended up bending her wing a little bit because I also heavily played with her. But um, wow, I can't believe how long I've had her, you know? It's crazy. There's so many ponies on my shelf that have been with me for so long now. Um, I haven't really bought that many ponies in recent years. So honestly, that whole shelf is very, very special to me. Um, let's talk about getting my first grail pony and how much that meant to me. So this is Mimic and I could not believe it when I got Mimic for Christmas one year. This Mimic is in not so great condition, but she's so incredibly sentimental to me because my mom got her for me as a Christmas gift and she spent a lot of money on her. <laughs> And um, that was a really good Christmas. So here is Mimic. She's on a lot of people's wish lists. I've had her since I was probably 11 or 12. <laughs> and I love her so much. I wish she wasn't in such bad condition. I mean, she's not too bad, but um, she definitely has some issues. <laughs> but then again, so do I. So I guess we can relate on that level. But getting her was like, I remember seeing her in the box and I was screaming. I was shaking. I couldn't believe it whenever I picked her up. So I'm really lucky to have a Mimic in my collection. Even though she's far from perfect, she's perfect to me in every way. And the story of how I got her means so, so much to me. So now let's talk about these little guys. And oh no, is this broken or something? <laughs> it's sitting in there kind of weird. So these are called Sweet Secrets. And this is a sweet secret that I bought because as a kid, like I said, I started collecting the vintage toys. And I bought this one and I used to wear it to school because I would pretend it was a Sailor Moon magical transformation item. <laughs> so here's a close up of this. Isn't it so cool? There's a locket on the front and it pops off and transforms into a little doll. And then inside, when you open this up, there's a comb and a mirror in there for you. And there's a little drawer that opens out 
and there's a comb for the doll. So it's a really cute little set and I can remember wearing it and you know here I was dealing with being bullied in school and I always imagined that like I was a magical girl and I was going to transform one day or something. So it made me feel like a superhero and like I can handle school whenever I wore this. I wish I still had the wristband to it because I would so wear this now. It's so bulky though like oh my god how did I wear this around school? Here was the other first uh, Sweet Secrets I ever found, and it's kind of funny how I basically turned into this thing. So I'm sorry there's like not much good lighting in front. I need to like move my lighting. Oh my goodness. All right, so that is so much better. I am so sorry for that. So here is what this looks like. And this was what I thought was like my Sailor Moon transformation item and it's kind of funny how I turned into the little girl in the locket. She also has pink hair. So here's what they do. They turn into this little girl. <laughs> Isn't that so cute? And wait, we gotta pull her little hands out. Ta-da! Isn't she so cute? Look, it's me! Except for I don't have bangs anymore. But it's just so funny how life worked out that way. And I turned into her. So Sweet Secrets were another very special toy line to me as a kid. Alright, so moving on. I have showed you guys this castle a million times. But honestly, this star castle means a lot to me. I already told you the story in my um, toy collection room tour where I was just checking out the toys, but this is my Under the Sea Star Castle. I wish I still had my original, but my original was absolutely broken because these things are very fragile. <laughs> but I love this thing so much as a kid. I got it, I think, for my fifth or sixth birthday. Actually, maybe my fourth birthday. I'm not sure, but I love these so much. And I'm so lucky to have this one in mint condition with all the pieces. I can remember that I had this on a shelf that had like one of those little vanity mirrors and this was sitting on it and I thought it was like the most beautiful thing ever. I thought they were absolute works of art. So I'm just so happy to still have one of these. The next thing here isn't really a toy, but it's a VHS that means a lot to me. So as a kid, I loved The Little Mermaid, and I can remember watching these VHSs of The Little Mermaid cartoon series. <laughs> so these ones that are all like holographic, I just love the overall look of these, how they're all shiny like that. I think I had quite a few of these. I don't know if I actually own them or if we rented, because we always rented. If I recognize the cover, I probably owned them. So yeah, I loved The Little Mermaid as a kid. So whenever I saw this thrifting, of course I had to have it because I was like, oh my gosh, I remember this and it's super, super cute. So now for a toy that is more recently sentimental to me. So this is my Brush of Love Bubble Love. And I don't know what it is about Brush of Love specifically, but there is just something about them that they are my most favorite toys in the whole world, even more so than My Little Pony and anything else. And I don't know why, but for the longest time, I wanted a brush of love, but I never imagined that I would ever find one or be able to afford one. And I was finally able to do that and I got Bubble Love here. <laughs> so Brush of Loves, if you are unaware of what they are, they are these strange little bear creatures. And this little guy has rainbows on his ears. He has a little pink belly and his eye makeup is really cool. They had like a powder puff in this paw thingy and a little mirror for you in this one. And then their tail is a brush. <laughs> So it's like a curly brush. It's super weird. You can kind of like gently brush their fur with it or kind of, you know, carefully curl their bangs and um, yeah, I love Brush of Loves. They're just so snuggly and really fun to collect. Like I've never seen anything quite like them. I have two more over there, but this is the one that means the most to me because it was my first and it was my grail toy. And I did a video on the channel where I opened him and I cried major tears 
because I just never thought I would have one of these and there are times where I feel like I take this collection for granted and I lived through a situation in October where you know I did lose this collection I was someplace <laughs> where I couldn't access my collection I, I couldn't see everything I loved and during that time like I realized you know how good I have it in my life and so this is a reminder to me of like Heather you wanted this plush so bad like you spent hours and days and weeks and months trying to get a brush of love and you have it and be grateful you know so honestly this little guy just gives off this strange warmth almost like he's alive or something I don't know how to describe it but I really really love this plush and he's like spiritually bonded with me and I could never ever give him up so this is the one toy in my collection that I will absolutely have forever and ever and ever so I had to throw this little guy in here my PJ sparkles pet I believe they're called sparklins because this is the rarest toy I have ever found thrifting um, I do have a very rare um, Venezuelan My Little Pony that I found off Craigslist, but as far as thrift adventures, this is the most valuable toy I have ever found. So here's a close up of this little guy. I'm hoping to get more eventually, but they are quite expensive. If you want one of these, you're going to look at spending at least $100. Um, and oh, it's already starting to glow. I wonder if my camera will capture that. We'll try uh, before I end this video. But whenever I saw this guy laying in the bins at Goodwill, I snatched him up so quick and I was so scared of someone stealing him out of my cart. They wouldn't have cared. They didn't know what the heck this was. I was the only toy person there. But I can remember just like, freaking out all over Instagram. I did end up making a little video about it. I look a lot different in that video than I do now, but then again, I, I'm a different person now. I've really grown as a person since then, and I've learned a lot about myself. Um, but I can remember I shoved this little guy into my purse because we had to go into Walmart and I was not gonna let it leave my sight. Oh my goodness. I'm so lucky to have it. I really am, you know. I need to start spending more time with this collection because I am just so blessed. I am so blessed to have this collection and I'm doubly blessed that I finally have a place to be understood about why I love this stuff because I've kind of discovered that, you know, in my personal life, not everybody gets it and people that I thought got it we're talking crap about me behind my back for the collection and it's nice to know that there's a place in my little corner of the internet where we can all meet up and share our love of these toys and honestly don't worry what anyone thinks about your collection don't don't even care don't let other people's opinions dissuade you from loving this stuff because this is some seriously cool and fun stuff and life is too short to not have fun life is too short to not just do what you want wear what you want just live your life and collect your toys and go on your thrifting adventures with either your, just yourself or someone you care about, you know, um, meet up with other collectors, hang out in your collection, collecting rooms. This is a wonderful, wonderful thing. This is a great thing to be a part of and you have no reason to be ashamed or embarrassed or wanting to hide it. Express yourself, share your toys because they are so, so cool. All right, everyone, so I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna send you off with this little cutie lighting up the night, and I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye. Well, my camera's not really liking that, but how about a glow friend? Oh, my older camera would have picked it up so much better. Oh, well.